just want to know what your uh, opinions are on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her Green New Deal. Uh, just whoever wants to answer the question. Yeah. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't looked at the Green New Deal in, in great detail, so I, I, don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it. But certainly the idea that we need to have um, a really important, massive, urgent response to climate change, I, I don't see how anybody could, could deny that. I mean, climate change, guys, is an existential risk. Uh, this is, this is a, a, your generation, I'm not that old, my generation too, uh, we're gonna be dealing with this. Um, this, is, this is an existential threat. And um, I, I think we need government to do something major. And if the Green New Deal is, is part of that, then, then great. We, we, certainly, we, we need collective action. And the only way to get that right now is through government. And so I, I to that extent, support the, the Green New Deal for sure. I, I'll just say I'll be the one person who disagrees. Uh, you know, I don't think climate change is an existential threat. I don't think there are many or any, I think the only existential threat to humanity is humanity. That is uh, nuclear bombs and war, I think, are the real existential threat. I don't believe climate change is. We have the ability to deal with anything nature throws at us. We are amazing at figuring out solutions to these problems. You don't need a massive, complete remaking of the US economy. I mean. The, the new deal that she published, I think she withdrew it from their website, but the one she published on her website was nuts. I mean, it was every single building in the United States within 10 years would be retrofitted. Uh, there would be no positive carbon footprint. I mean, I guess we stop breathing. It, within 12 years, uh, I mean, I guess we kill all the cows. We have to, she talks about killing all the cows, so we stop eating beef. I mean, it's, it, it truly is nuts. Um, Climate change happening, not happening, whatever's happening to the climate, it's changing. It always changes. Oh if it gets significantly warmer, there are all kinds of things that we can do. For example, Canada will become habitable. Maybe some of us will move to Canada. Um, <laughs> I'm serious about this stuff. People have moved throughout human history because of weather. This is not new. There were, there were ice ages, and humanity moved around because of the ice age. There are going to be costs, but the amazing thing is if we allow the economy to grow, if we allow wealth to actually be created during this period, then we'll be rich enough to be able to deal with whatever climate throws at us in the decades to come. And let me just say this about this generational thing, because this depresses me. I mean, I've never seen a generation so depressed than young people today. I mean, you're convinced that the world's going to end. It's not. It's not going to it end. It is. <laughs> Millennials, millennial cults have always existed. And we're just replacing one millennial cult with a new millennial cult. 1989, the IPCC or whatever it was said we had 10 years to fix climate change or we were all going to die equivalent. That was 1989. It's, it's 2000, whatever, 19 already. And you know, life's pretty good out there. Um, life's pretty good for pretty much everybody. It's not like the climate is destroying human life anywhere on the planet right now. Uh, right now, it's 12 years. Let's meet up in 12 years and we'll figure out whether human life is being demolished, because we're not going to do anything about climate change, let's be real. Nobody's going to actually implement the Green New Deal and the Chinese are not going to do it. And if the Chinese don't do it, then carbon emissions are going to still accelerate through the roof. Um, let's meet in 12 years and see how many people have died because of climate I still remember uh, the population bomb in 1968 by, by Ulrich, who is a big climate change guy. I still remember the global freezing. I still remember uh, Carson's book, uh, that we're all gonna buy of cancer uh, at a young age because of chemicals. Life's pretty good on planet Earth. Start enjoying it. Stop being so depressed about the state of the world. I would just urge you not to take my word for it or his word for it, but look at the science and read, if you wanted to Google one thing, Google life after warming, the uninhabitable Earth. This is a book that summarizes the state of the art science the overwhelming consensus on this is that he's dead wrong about this, and we better get our shit together ASAP. Well, we'll say the overwhelming consensus is, it, there's overwhelming consensus about warming. There's no overwhelming consensus about catastrophic warming. Yeah, talk, to the IP, talk to the UN IPCC about that. Yeah, UN has incentives. Can you give me a, can you be a little bit more specific? I've never sure. been to Harvard. I've never been to class there, but can you give me an That's example? That's your advantage. Oh, thank you. Of how they are teaching sacrifice, how they are teaching altruism? Well, open daily paper and look at Mr. Carter, a very peculiar creature, who is telling you that we're going to uh, overcome the oil shortage by driving less, by giving up, 
Let us all make a sacrifice. Let's lower our standard of living, and we'll all be living better. Now, is that a proper philosophy to tell a country that has pride and self-esteem? At one time, with all the faults in American intellectual equipment, and there were a lot of faults, at least people were taught pride in their own country and in the good aspects, the great achievements of this country. Today, you're supposed to apologize to every naked savage anywhere on the globe because you are more prosperous, because you've earned your money. You have to feel guilty and apologize for it while he hasn't and doesn't intend to learn from you. He just wants your money. That's